Hello everyone, so as you may have seen recently, a bill to save net neutrality recently passed the Senate, which if net neutrality is saved, it will effectively ensure that full government control of the internet and the same sort of monopolization behind ISPs that supporters of net neutrality's claim to be opposed to is institutionalized. But as anyone who's even read the first page of Title II can tell you, net neutrality is not opposition to censorship of the internet, it doesn't prevent that, and it doesn't prevent carriers from creating so-called rate packages. Net neutrality is nothing more than a bill which imposes price fixing and halts advances or innovation in the market, making it even harder to compete for small businesses. But that doesn't stop supporters of net neutrality because unlike other authoritarian tyrannical movements which may hint at their true intention behind a thick veil of dishonesty, at least they try and make an argument for why their case is justified. But the entire argument in support of net neutrality is based on nothing but lies and propaganda, which makes it all the more Machiavellian and why I feel obligated to make this video. Here are the top 10 lies created by net neutrality supporters about net neutrality. Number 10. Net neutrality was signed into law in 1996 under the Telecommunications Act. This is patently incorrect. The Telecommunications Act of 1996 specifically states that broadband internet service providers were not classified as telecommunications carriers and therefore were not subject to regulation by the FCC. In fact, the concept of net neutrality didn't even exist until 2003 when the term was coined by Columbia University professor Tim Wu. If this were true, the internet wouldn't have been able to develop the way it has and the ISP market would have been even more anti-competitive than it already is because the Telecom Act notably made the industries it did classify less competitive and monopolized them more by making the industry needlessly more expensive to trade in, which shut down many small businesses. The reason net neutrality supporters lie about this is because it single-handedly shatters the illusion that this regulation has done anything for the market other than slow it down since it's only been in law since 2015. Number 9. The ISP market is unregulated which is what spawned the monopolization that exists today. This is perhaps my favorite argument by net neutrality supporters because it's the main argument that they have for their position, yet it's the single point where their position begins to fall apart at the seams and it plays into the last point. Net neutrality regulation didn't exist until 2015, which means that this can't be true because the industry operated just fine without FCC intervention into the market for decades. So to remedy this, they lie and claim that net neutrality was implemented in 1996 under the Telecommunications Act. HA! Take that, you stupid free market supporters! All of the internet's success was because of regulation after all! If the internet was regulated under net neutrality since 1996, how can you argue that the problems with the internet today are the result of a lack of regulation? Either the industry has been regulated under net neutrality since 1996, in which case the problems with the ISP industry are either directly caused by net neutrality, or net neutrality has been ineffective in solving these problems. Or, net neutrality has only existed since 2015, in which case the reason the internet has been so innovative is a result of a lack of FCC control. But what's plainly obvious is that both of these positions openly contradict one another. If one is true, then the other necessarily cannot be. And for the record, the main cause of ISP monopolization is zoning laws, literally forbidding ISPs from competing in certain counties by law. For example, King County, Washington, the only ISP allowed in the area is Comcast, and if any other service provider were to enter the area, they would be given a fine and forced to leave. 
In reality, investors and entrepreneurs are actually directly incentivized to enter markets with a high demand to make profit. As long as there's a demand for a commodity, there will be competitors attempting to enter the market. So the idea of a natural monopoly forming out of an unregulated market is pure nonsense. Number 8. Large ISP corporations keep smaller competitors out of the market by initiating force against them to keep them out of the market. This is blatantly untrue, as there has never been a single documented example of this sort of activity occurring. However, if it were true, you wouldn't need a new regulation because this would be illegal and incredibly unethical as people have the right to associate in any way they like and own any property that they can obtain as long as it's obtained legitimately. The only way this sort of activity on a systemic level could occur would be if a larger corporation was paying the government to bail them out for their crimes, in which case, again, the government is responsible, not the market. Market. Number 7. ISPs ban access to certain services such as Hulu or Netflix. Again, blatantly untrue as there are no documented examples of this practice occurring. You'll notice that a good half of the arguments made by net neutrality supporters are baseless claims with absolutely no evidence to back them up. This is what happens when you're incredibly uninformed about a certain topic and for whatever reason you feel as if you need to try and have an opinion about it, so you mindlessly regurgitate corporate propaganda to try and make yourself sound intelligent and fit into the crowd. Which leads me to my next point. Number 6. ISPs lobby to get rid of net neutrality and staunchly oppose it. Now normally, when demagogues play the class war divide and conquer tactic, generally, they don't name the specific corporations or businesses they're accusing of conspiring to do whatever they're accusing them of doing. Let me explain to you how this works. You see, the corporations finance Team America, and then Team America goes out, and the corporations sit there and they're in their corporation buildings and 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 see that they're all corporation-y and they make money and the reason that they never deviate away from ambiguity is because if they did it would be incredibly easy to fact check their claims and realize that corporations all lobby for regulations or finance the campaigns of politicians who support increasing regulation now, net neutrality supporters made the mistake of naming names. Particularly, they blame Comcast. And would you like to take a guess at what Comcast openly supports and aggressively lobbies for? I consistently find time and time again that when these pro-regulation types tell you to follow the money, and if you actually do end up following the money, you end up reaching conclusions which are politically unfavorable to them. And I find that remarkably hilarious and terrifying at the same time, because it proves that a good half of the country effectively trusts politicians. They don't do any research for themselves and they just sort of take their word for it. And I figure while we're at it, let's take a crack at some pro-government regulation sophistry as well. Number five, regulation is needed for a market. Absolutely incorrect. Competition ensures that market entities will provide the best quality of service they can, because otherwise people can just go to another producer or trader to get their service at a better quality, and without customers, they lose profit. In fact, government regulations, as noted earlier, only make it more expensive to compete in the market and therefore only benefit big corporations at the expense of everyone else because it ensures that less competitors will be able to, to enter the market. So rather ironically, it's the people who are pro-government regulation who are in favor of corrupt business practice and in opposition to the little guy, as they would put it. So, I'm aware that this is a top 10 list, but I already debunked number 4, 3, and 2 at the very beginning of the video. The idea that net neutrality prevents censorship, the rate package argument, which is really just nothing but pure fear-mongering, and the idea that net neutrality isn't just a blatant power grab from the state. So let's move on to number 1, shall we? Number 1. The internet is a public utility. I put this at number one because of its important to the overall debate regarding government intervention into the market. There is simply no such thing as a public utility. More specifically, the distinction between a so-called public utility is entirely arbitrary and determined by politicians. 
All politicians are doing when they declare something to be a public utility is to declare that they have full control over that particular commodity, no matter who owns it. They have dominion over it, meaning that they're declaring that they own it. Even if they give you the illusion of ownership over it, they ultimately control it since they have dominion over it. In reality, there is only private property, and anything outside of that is theft. The government can't produce anything or enter the market without stealing from private owners who rightfully obtained their property from voluntary association or by creating it themselves, because the government doesn't own anything and is simply a monopoly on arbitration. And it's this monopoly on arbitration that they hold which gives them the ability to do unethical things without facing any consequences for it. Such as stealing from people and claiming that they have full control over every single particular commodity. Not because they can actually justify their actions, but because they've literally made it so no other forms of arbitration can exist and everyone has to obey their rulings. The internet is a commodity, and it's operated by internet service providers, but all of a sudden, the government can come along and declare, nope, that's not the case because we say so. And now, only the government can own it. The ultimate form of monopolization, the personification of tyranny, and the highest degree of criminality.